Hello, my name is Paul and I work with the Holochain project, where my job is to figure out how to explain Holochain to the world. What it is, how it works, and why you should care. Sometimes it feels like a big job, like I'm being asked to describe reality in one paragraph and give at least three examples. Not that I think that Holochain equals reality or anything, but reality and Holochain are both kind of complex. Not complicated, which is kind of a bad word in engineering, but just that the level of complexity is appropriate to the problem at hand. And maybe that's the best place to start. What problem is Holochain actually trying to solve? Generally, it's the same problem that everyone in the DWeb space is trying to solve. Concentration of power, which leads to loss of human agency, which leads to all sorts of other nasties. Everything from my internet is down and I can't access my reports now to a major democratic nation just got hacked by social media and now it's throwing 500 errors. But when you take the big organization out of the middle, it gets a bit messy. With no police force, there's no way to tell who or what can be trusted. And infrastructure can break down too and there's nobody to fix it. These are serious usability problems, and the centralized world has largely figured them out, for better or for worse. Centralization means maintainability and simplicity for engineers and top-down enforceable safety and reliability for users. And the DWeb needs to figure these problems out or nobody's going to want to use it. We just want the simplicity, reliability, and safety of the centralized internet, along with the self-determination that people want. Is that too much to ask? <laughs> That's why the decentralized world spends so much of its effort on system integrity. Depending on the application, that means different things. It could be event ordering, availability, access control, authentication, data validity. Now, before I get into how Holochain tackles these issues differently, there's a few plain details that I want to share about what it actually is. Holochain is a framework for building peer-to-peer -peer applications. It aims to ensure system integrity without needing central coordination. There's no servers and there's no blockchain ledger. Each application enjoys its own isolated network built by all the people who use it without any particular maintenance effort on their part. So now that we know what Holochain is, let's go back to how it tackles system integrity. So now while blockchain inherits the centralized world's assumption that there must be a single authoritative truth, Holochain starts with a simple observation about the real world. The only thing that really exists is individual agents making observations and then taking actions, and most of the time that works out pretty okay. That's because as we gather information, we share our observations with others, and we receive their observations in turn, and gradually everybody's perspectives converge on a pretty decent approximation of the truth. Now, let's see how this works in practice. So in Holochain, the basic ontological unit is the agent. That's, that's you, or rather the software that runs on your behalf. For every application you use, the Holochain runtime hosts a piece of code on your machine called the application's DNA. You exercise your agency in this application the same way you always do on a computer. You do something, and it triggers a function call. The difference here is that everything is happening on your machine. Your DNA exposes some functions as an agent-facing API, and these functions can write data, retrieve data, process it, and connect with other agents in the network. Now, whenever the DNA wants to change local state, Holochain records it at that action in an event journal. There's one journal for each application. And your DNA is also expected to expose a set of functions that act as a validation API. They encode the rules that define what valid data looks like. What squares is the knight allowed to move to? How long is a tweet? Can you have a negative balance on your account? Who is allowed to look at the company directory and who can add new entries? Now, since you and your peers judge each other's integrity based on the data that you produce, this is pretty darn important. These rules govern the actions of the group of people who belong to the application's network. They prevent you from accidentally doing something bad and they help you detect malicious intent in the people that you're interacting with. So this is Holochain's first pillar of system integrity, intrinsic data validity. The application's validation rules, plus some basic cryptographic proofs provided by Holochain itself, help you deterministically answer the question, given what I can see, does everything look correct? 
but a lot of peer-to-peer -peer technologies do that. For most applications, especially finance, law, governance, that's not quite enough. You also need to know things like, is what I'm seeing everything that there is to see? You need some way of knowing that the person you're about to buy a house from, for instance, hasn't already sold that same house to somebody else last week. So for this, Holochain adds peer witnessing. You see, some of the data that you write to your journal gets shared. First, of course, any application data that's meant for other people to see, like tweets and other public things, but also the header for each of your journal entries. Then a small random selection of your peers gets that data that you produce, validate it against their copy of the rules, and then they store it. This creates a shared database for the application. It's held collectively by all the users. This is great for availability, and we'll talk about that in a moment, but the important thing here is that the network remembers what you've done. And the most basic rule, the rule shared by all Holochain applications, is that you can't modify data that you've already written to your journal. It's an event log, it's not a random access table or anything like that. And if any of your peers catch you tampering with this journal, they remember this and report it to the next person who wants to check up on you. So the other thing that your peers do is they check the integrity of all the application data that gets published to the shared database. The neat thing about this is that if any of it breaks the application's rules, the validators broadcast a message. It's kind of like an antibody that lets others identify the bad actor. This gives the network a sort of immune system that lets it respond more rapidly and efficiently to threats. Rather than waiting for someone to discover invalid data when they retrieve it, the validators can sound the alarm as soon as it's published and take action. Usually that looks like ejecting the bad actor from the network. So this is sounding kind of complicated, but fortunately all this stuff either happens in the background or is abstracted behind an SDK that gives you pretty straightforward data points for your code to act on. Now, going back to availability, spreading the data across all the users' machines also makes the whole thing more resilient to network disruptions. You always have access to your own data, even when you're offline. And there's a pretty good chance that you and your office mates on the same network can still connect with each other and share the information that you do have. This helps reduce lost days of productivity because some poor admin fat fingered a command in a faraway data center. Not that that's ever happened to any of us. Anyway, <laughs> the nice thing about dropping the need for a single source of truth is that Holochain is just a lot more responsive and efficient than blockchain. There's no effort wasted on reaching global consensus, and because only a small selection of peers holds each piece of data, the individual burden of participation is pretty light. We expect that for most applications, it'll be light enough for a smartphone. In fact, in our early tests, we managed to run 50 instances of a DAO-like application on a Raspberry Pi, which is not that bad. So enough about how Holochain works under the hood. What can you actually build with it? Well, pretty much just normal apps. It's just a framework. It's just one that happens to not need a server in the middle. You can build online communities, team productivity tools, knowledge repositories, supply chains, IoT networks, financial apps, etc., etc. And it even has some value as a local first plus cloud backup system for your own personal data. So you might be wondering, what's it like to build a Holochain app? Well, I won't lie, it's definitely different. Some of your design choices will get harder. For instance, when there's no single source of truth and not everything lives in one place, you might have to get clever about how you model and represent data. Uh, the shared database is just a big hash table with links between records. So you do have to think of it as sort of a graph database. And you have to think about what data is safe to share and what should stay private on people's devices. But other things actually get a lot easier. For instance, security and scaling and uptime are a lot more manageable because there's no centralized failure points. And in terms of modeling user-centered business logic, all of your code runs from the perspective of the individual agent. And there's no such thing as user registrations and logins. Everyone just represents themselves with a public key that they create. And uh, niceness is built in. You don't have to worry quite as much about the moral or legal impact of data collection because privacy is kind of default. Users aren't locked into a particular way of interacting with your application either because the app runs on their machines and they can call the API of the application however they like. 
and they can always take their data with them if they decide to leave. And if you're used to writing blockchain applications, it's a bit more forgiving. Upgrading an app or forking a network isn't a governance crisis like it is on blockchain. It's just a normal part of the DevOps cycle. So where is Holochain at right now? Is it ready to build on? Holochain isn't production stable or feature complete yet, but it's definitely ready to start hacking and prototyping on. We've spent the last year refactoring it based on feedback from devs and our own learnings, and devs are telling us it's pretty nice to work with now. So if you want to start working on Holochain app, here are some details that you need to know. DNAs, the back end of your application, run in a WebAssembly sandbox. So you'll need to write in a language that compiles to WASM. And we've also got an SDK for Rust, which makes things easier. You can write your front end with any language, framework, or toolkit that you like. You just need to remember that it runs on your users' devices. Uh, it talks to their locally running Holochain runtime using RPC calls over WebSocket. Now in terms of platform support, Holochain and the dev tools run on Linux, or Windows 10 with WSL2, or any machine with a Linux VM. And we're also working on native Mac OS and Windows support. Now mobile isn't supported yet, but getting Holochain working on resource-constrained devices has always been a top priority for us. So that'll help when we do start looking at mobile. The networking code works. All traffic is end-to-end -end encrypted. And we run a public bootstrap server to help peers discover each other and a public proxy server to help punch through NAT gateways and firewalls. There's a small but growing ecosystem of tools, libraries, and learning materials to help you get started. And the community is just really lovely and really supportive. And lastly, we're building a hosting service, decentralized of course, called Holohost, uh, which will let you offer your apps to users over the traditional web. And that's it. Thanks for joining me, and I hope all this made sense, and I'm excited to start talking with you about Holochain in the Q&A. See you there.